All set. Okay. May I also record, Mike? Yes, you may. I think Mike, oh, perfect. Thank you. All set. Okay. Uh, this is Chairman Mike McCoo, Town of Wellington Board of Finance, calling to order at 7.05 p.m. in the meeting of June 18th, 2020. Um, we do have enough members for quorum, and uh, we do not have any of the alternates on the meeting yet that I can see, so we will not be seating anyone for the missing um, members. We'll just bring people on as they come on. Um, so, uh, on to our agenda. Um, approval of minutes. I have a note on this before we start. Uh, when I got to the minutes of I think it's three five it looks like the minutes of 220 and one of the meetings on 227 were already approved in the three five meeting Marissa are you able to shed any light on that I think if you look at the three five yeah so there were three meetings on 227 uh, sorry yep there were three meetings on 227 Right, and emergency, special, and a budget meeting, or, oh, I, I'm not sure now. Yeah, um, and there were two meetings on the 20th, so we approved oh, okay. number one on the 20th, and we approved number one on the 27th, but we didn't approve numbers two on the 20th and numbers two and three on the 27th. Understood. Okay, so the ones you sent us in the email are the have already been sorted and resolved this problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, then disregard my comment, thank you. No worries. Okay, so in that case then, we will start with the minutes of 2-20-2020. Twenty, I do have one note on page three, paragraph F. It says, uh, I think Conservation Commission have, which I think should be has, Commission has. That was the only note I had for 220. Any other board members with um, comments on the minutes from 220, 2020? Okay. Um, can I get so a long ago? I can't, you know. <laughs> Go ahead, Jeff. It was so long ago, I can't even remember. Yeah. I, <laughs> February was a while back. It was a whole I'll, time. I'll move to approve. So okay. we can. Can I get a second? I'll second it. Okay. Uh, yeah, just to comment on that, it was a long time ago in many ways. Um, it was a different budget process. Um, it was before all our meeting formats changed, unfortunately. There is a lot in that time, but I did spend quite a bit of time reading through all of them and tried to, I started with 220, trying to reset my brain back into where we were in February, which seems like it was two years ago. Um, so uh, I, I feel like it captured things pretty well. Any other comment? Marissa, you ready to do a roll call? Yep. Um, Jeff. Yes. Peter. Yes. Uh, Christina. Yes. Matt. Matt, you're in mute still. There you go. Sorry about that. Yes. And Mike. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, we have, uh, as we discussed a minute ago, we have two meetings to approve from February 27th. Um, on the first one, um, which was not the emergency meeting, um, page four, top paragraph, third line, there's a line that says, all spoke with all. Hmm. If you can just check that and I'm not sure what it was supposed to mean. There may just be an extra all in there. Yeah. 
I'll take a look at it. Um, let me pull it up. February 27th. Number two. Um, page four, you said? Uh, page four, top paragraph, third line. Oh, yeah. And spoke with all parents individually. Okay. And, okay. I've amended that. Thank you. Any other comments? Can I get a motion to accept? I'll move to accept as amended. Second, please. I'll second that. Okay, any more discussion? All right, Marissa, go ahead. Okay, Matt? Yes. Peter? Yes. Uh, Christina? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Mike? Yes. All right. Okay, on to 227-2020, the emergency meeting. I had, I did not have any notes on that one. Any other board comments? Can we get a motion to accept? I'll move motion to accept. accept. Okay. I'll second. All right, any more discussion? Let's vote. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Matt? Yes. Uh, Peter? Yes. I'll kick him out in a minute. And Jeff? Yes. Um, Christina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, the meeting uh, three five. I did not have any notes on that one either. Um, any other board comments on the minutes from the meeting of three five? I'll move to accept. Thank you. Can I get a second? Yeah, I'll second that. Any more discussion from the board? Let's vote. Uh, Christina? Yes. Matt? Yes. Peter? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Mike? Yes. Okay, on to the minutes of 4-9-2020. Uh, I had to know page three. Paragraph two of new business. Um, April 9th. Yep. Not half to through. I, I can't read my note now. Hang. I'm going to open it myself. Page three. Paragraph two. Oh, of new business. Yes. Oh, there's two that's. Uh, oh, maybe not. No. All right. Hey, I'll find it in a second here. I'm scrolling through the pages. Sorry. So many minutes. Mm hmm. Paragraph two of new business. Oh, okay. Second line. Okay. Uh, towns people for approval and inquired whether this transfer does not have to through that. I think oh, I have, have to go. go. Yeah, okay. have to go through that process. Okay. Sorry, my note, my handwriting was not clear. Nope, that makes sense. And then in the attachments, um, you attached Matt's PowerPoint, which is good. Um, I think there should be a cover on that one and I'll also do it for my PowerPoint in a later meeting that um, there should just be a cover in the attachments that says presentation to the board. Okay. Um, like, uh, 
if you can like insert, another page you can insert a page in there that says uh you know pre presented to the board by matt clark or something like that um and we'll do the same thing later with the one i did so it doesn't look like it's a product of the board when someone's right. looking at this two years from now okay yeah that's noted in the minutes but i i see what you mean you think you can figure out how to slip that in there yeah i'll figure that out okay other board comments on the meeting minutes for four nine. All right, can I get a motion to accept as amended? I'll make that. I'll make that motion. All right. And Christina, was that you for the you want to take the second? Sure. Okay. Any more discussion? Okay, let's vote. Peter. Yes. Matt. Yes. Christina. Yes. Mike. Yes. And Jeff. Yes. Okay. Okay, on to the minutes of May 7th, 2020. I have no notes for that one. Anybody else? I'll move to accept. Can I get a second? I'll second. Thank you. Any more discussion on May 7th? Let's vote. Christina. Yes. Peter. Yes. Jeff. Yes. Matt. Yes. Mike. Yes. Okay, on to the minutes of May 14th. Uh, I have a note, page five. Hang on, bring it up here so I make sure I do this right. Uh, page five, second paragraph, top line, one versus once. Page five, second line. Uh, or, page five, second paragraph, top line. Uh, oh, yep. Numbers once the economy starts to open up. Yep, okay. And then the same thing, I did a PowerPoint presentation, if you can figure out how to slip a cover in there. Okay. Any other board comments for 514? All right. Uh, can I get a motion? I'll move to accept. Thank you. Can I get a second? I'll second that. Thank you. Any more board discussion? All right, let's vote. Matt. Yes. Peter. Yes. Jeff. Yes. Uh, Christina. Yes. Mike. Yes. Okay. Um, we have two for May 28th. The first one is the public hearing. I had no notes on that one. Any other board contributions? Yeah, I, I didn't. Uh, this is where I, I stopped reading. I couldn't. I couldn't make it any further. So I'll be abstaining from the next couple. Okay. It was a lot of ground to cover, especially the thirty-two pages of the meeting a couple back. Um, okay. Any other comments? Can I get a motion to approve the first the public hearing on five twenty-eight? So moved. And a second, please. I'll second. Any more board discussion? Okay, let's vote. Uh, Jeff. Yes. Peter. Yes. Christina. Yes. Matt, you you said abstain. Abstain. Okay, Mike. Yes. Right. Um,
And then the last one is the Board of Finance meeting immediately following the public hearing on 528. Uh, I have a note, page four, paragraph four. Uh, one, two, three, four. Line three. Over to the right, what he got a response to was most people saying. Got, was a response, I think. Or maybe I'm just reading that wrong. What he got a response to was most people saying we should keep taxation or mill rate flat. Okay. See, when you have the inflection in the comment, now I get it. Well, I always, yeah, it's hard to come across, and I can try and uh, clean that up a little bit. Comma? It's, I think it's, um, it's probably nitpicking at this point. I could say something like, you know, the response was most people saying. Sure, that way it's clear. Okay. Any other comments on that from the board? Can I get a motion to accept as amended? So moved. And a second. I'll second. Thank you. Any more comments on the motion? All right, let's vote. Peter. Yes. Jeff. Yes. And Christina. Yes. Mike. Yes. And Matt. Okay. All right. Thank you all uh, for the time going through all of those. It was a huge volume of material. Okay. Um, present to speak. Uh, we'll do the same thing that uh, we've done uh, in the earlier meetings. We'll look for anyone who's on video right now who would like to speak to wave their hand. We'll get you and then we'll also get to any phone callers who may want to speak. So if you are present to speak and you would like to be recognized, please wave your hand and uh, we'll pick you up. Peter Latinchich. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Peter Latinchich, 97 Trask Road. I have a, a comment and then a couple of questions post uh, budget process. My comment is I wanted to express my deep disappointment that uh, at a time when the town was not able to vote in our normal referendum fashion due to the government executive order, that this board chose to exercise that, that right for us, and in doing so, uh, increase spending at a time of great economic distress in our community. Um, obviously, uh, you chose to do so, and the majority voted that way. Um, many townspeople were gravely disappointed uh, by that action, particularly since they didn't have an opportunity to, to vote on it. Um, that said, um, I have several questions about the process moving forward I'd like you to address tonight. Uh, the first question I have is, how is this board going to be monitoring expenditures uh, in the board of, I'm sorry, in the school budget and the town budget? Is that gonna be on a monthly basis? Will we know what that is? And are the freezes still in place? So that's question number one, how will expenditures be monitored, obviously, that was critical during the budget process that we know that. Um, secondly, with respect to the school budget, I don't see any representation here tonight um, from that group, but during the budget process, the MBR documentation was discussed multiple times. Um, I would like to know if the town has received a final copy of that calculation and if the EO Smith reduction this year, which is substantial, was part of that calculation because that would assist the town in next year's budget process. With respect to the school capital project for roofs, 
is that now almost two year old approval moving forward and is that work commencing? Um, and lastly, um, and of grave concern to me, it was also mentioned during the budget process that our, our fund balance would be an attractive, for lack of a better word, target for the teachers union that will be negotiating for their increases in the next contract, indicating that we're a fiscally prudent community. What steps will this board be taking to restructure that fund balance so that we don't have that exposure? Those are my questions. I hope you can address them this evening. Thank you. Okay, uh, Peter, just give me a minute because I'm taking notes to make sure I get those questions right. Okay, I'm gonna answer the ones I can and then we'll see if we can get some other, um, anyone else who might be able to help answer some of those. Um, the first question you asked is, how is the board going to monitor expenses? Um, I would say that in normal times, uh, the short and easy answer is that um, we don't, this time of year, we don't spend a lot of time in monitoring people's year to date or their expenses. It's just not typically um, on our radar. But I would say that this year being so different, um, and I anticipate discussions further on in this meeting about what we're doing next. Um, so I think, I think that's an excellent question for this year. Um, and as I said, in the past, we have not typically been monitoring year to day other, when pe other than when people come to us. Um, so I don't have an answer other than I think it will be on our radar. Um, to question number two, um, the only freezes I'm aware of uh, would be in, um, I believe Erica had had some in her area. Uh, Erica, do you want to comment on that? Uh, yes, when um, shortly after we declared the civil preparedness emergency, um, I put a spending freeze on non-essential spending and that's still in place. I anticipate a renewed freeze, at least from my end, if not from this board, um, in the beginning of the current fiscal, the new fiscal year. Um, the next question uh, about the school MBR, I, last I talked to the superintendent, he did not have information on that. And the, um, that was consistent with what the state said that it would be many months um, before we would have that information. Uh, Erica, I don't know if you have anything to update that. It's typically August um, and I would anticipate this year it may be even later. Um, there's been no indication of that but it's typically into well into August before any MBR calculations are given to the town. Go ahead, Matt. So um, we're supposed to abide by an MBR from the state of Connecticut that is not provided to us until three or four or five months after we approve budgets. That's correct. As I said at the, at the, at the other, the other one, of our, one of our meetings, it, that's Kafka-esque, it's surreal. How, how, how does that supposed to work? I don't, I don't know. Well, this is how it works, unfortunately. It's, um, we well, if, simply, they, if they cannot provide us with anything, then how, why are we bound to, 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 to adhere to the, to the rule? That's a great question that we don't have an answer to, and we've tried to get an answer to, and I think we can continue to try to get that answer. But in the meantime, we're stuck with the rules. The state, as we're all aware of, the state is the last one to follow its rules. Um, the status on the roofs, uh, Peter, you asked about that. At our last meeting, I did confirm with um, the superintendent that he was going to do everything in his power to try to keep those roof projects going um, so that we could try to get them in uh, in the fiscal year and also be able to see the uh, reimbursement process get started in the same fiscal year. Obviously, we're all behind the eight ball as far as the budget process and it being coming into summer. Um, so I don't know what moves specifically he's made since that last meeting, but he did know that we were anxious to see that project um, move forward. 
and uh, on the fund balance target question, um, the only thing that I can say on that that I'm aware of right now is there has been discussion at our meetings um, that uh, the Board of Finance is involved often in um, contract negotiations and the board will be keenly interested in any of the involvement they can have in the coming year. Um, we have, as you know, reduced the fund balance through this budget process um, a fair amount down into the 13 range. How that's going to play out, I'm not sure. Um, there are, we have a lot of unknowns, just what's going to happen with the economy over the next uh, few months or the next year. So I can't, I can't give you an answer myself on that other than all of these things are definitely on our radar and their concerns in my mind. Um, I don't know if any other board members have comments on any of these items. Matt? When, when uh, will we be negotiating the teacher's contract? Uh, I don't know when the next, uh, when the next teacher's contract is up. Do you know that Erica? I'm sorry, I don't know offhand. Uh, if memory serves, it may be, I, I think two more years, but, but I'm not positive. Oh, two more years? I, I think, but don't quote me on that. You'd have to look it up. Phil can definitely answer that and it's on file in the town clerk's office. Anything else uh, from the board to help answer Peter's questions? No, we don't have to answer. Peter, I know we didn't give you all the answers you were looking for. Uh, I think we gave you what we can. I apologize, I'm trying to answer an email at the same time. Did, uh, Peter Latintich, did you have any further comment? Uh, just a request. What's uh, that? I'm, I'm pleased to hear the contract negotiation is two years away because if it was now, it would almost be too late to prepare. Um, and I would suggest that this board make a motion to contact our accountants who do a fine job every year auditing our books and all the other things that they do and solicit their suggestions and advice for structuring our fund balance in a way where we're not vulnerable to organized labor rating it. So if, if, if you can do that, uh, they work for us, they represent us um, and they'll act in our best interest and I'm sure they can give us capable advice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, other uh, present to speak. If you're out there, um, go ahead, Erica. Um, I, Mike, did you receive a communication from my office yesterday regarding the new task force that the Board of Select yes. set up? Yes, at the end of um, present to speak, I was going to add I agenda items. Okay, thank you. I, I waited only to see if there was something that came up from present to speak that we needed I, to add. I was going to mention it, so that's, that's all mm -hmm. I have. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, we do have a couple people who are on phone. Um, not on video. Uh, Mike D'Amato, can you unmute everyone for a moment, please? Yep. I think I mean, the only person I see that's on phone is Jeff. Do you see someone else? Um, I see Donna and Sarah, or they're not on video anyway. <clears throat> oh, okay. And so Randy. Anybody, anybody should be able to unmute at this point. Okay, if there's anyone listening who wishes to speak and present to speak, please make sure you're unmute, unmuted and call your name out. Okay, we're moving on. Um, I do have a couple of agenda items to add. Um, as Erica just mentioned, we received a communication uh, after I issued the agenda yesterday. Um, about a um, emergency communications committee. I had it on my screen a second ago here. Um, Wilmington Board of Selectmen began discussions to address emergency communications in the wake of recent events in Willington on Monday, June 15th, 2020. Well, you know, I'll read all this once we add it to the agenda. So um, basically there's some action requested by uh, the Board of Selectmen. So I would like to add an item to new business, which would be item number three in new business, which would be emergency communications committee. 
Um, can I get a motion to add that? Or I'll, that's a motion on my part. Can I get a second? Say that again. Just a, we're just a, a discussion, or we're, we're, we're just adding. We're adding an agenda item. For okay. Communications committee. Be item three in new business. Okay, so Jeff seconded discussion. All right, let's vote. All right, Christina. Uh, Christina. Yes. Okay. Uh, Jeff. Yes. Peter. Yes. Matt. Yes. Mike. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, that's it for items to add to the agenda that I'm aware of. Um, so let's go to old business. Um, public health crisis update potential effects on municipal budgets. Um, I did as much research as I could do in coming into the meeting for my part. Um, Many of the businesses in town that were closed are now open to some extent. Um, for example, Hilltop Restaurant opened outdoors first and then as of yesterday opened with indoor, or was it today maybe? Anyway, they, they're, uh, they're opening indoor now. Um, the pizza houses have stayed in business. Um, the local um, uh, Helen Spirits has uh, stayed running. So um, I'm seeing I don't know if the word is encouraging, but at least uh, things are increasing. They're picking up. Um, as a matter of fact, um, one business owner told me he's having trouble getting his employees back. That, um, and the unemployment may be a little slow to resolve only because the extra uh, benefit is available right now. The extra $600 is available. So people are finding it more um, in the lower paying jobs are finding it more economically beneficial to stay home. Um, that that at this point will expire in about six weeks. I'm not sure if that'll change things. Um, I believe if I'm reading the numbers right, uh, our unemployment last month was 11% in Willington and is down to 6.1% now. Is that correct, Erica? That's correct. The official May numbers have not come out, but we saw a serious, um, well, in real numbers, we saw a decline. The, the numbers we originally looked at, that 11%, was in the processed continued claims. So it was really hard to see a real number from those numbers. Um, but the April number was about 6%, and I would anticipate a lower number in May with things reopening. Um, and I'd hoped tonight, I'm looking um, as we speak, I, I was hoping they'd have a main number up, but they have not yet. Yeah, I checked again about 15 minutes before the meeting to see if there was a new number. Um, so um, the, most of the people that I've been able to come in contact with town in town are um, doing fairly well. There are a few people I know of who are still in an unemployed situation uh, or underemployed, reduced hours. Um, you know, and that does concern me some. On the positive side, um, I'm in the process of attempting to do a refi and my mortgage person told me that um, she's absolutely crazy busy because the rates are so low. And believe it or not, she said um, she's doing new house sales uh, as fast as she can do them. And her, her reasoning that she gave me yesterday was that the um, demand is greater than supply right now. Um, and part of that is people moving out of the cities. Um, but she said um, the comps are starting to go up. The house values are going up. She's got people moving out of PMI, so they're reducing their mortgage. Um, so again, I'm not trying to paint the picture. It's all rosy, but those are some encouraging signs. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was everything. That was everything I was able to dig up at this point. Erica, go ahead. We have, um, and amongst town leaders, we've all shared a little bit of the same concern in people um, not going back to work because with the six hundred dollar plus up, um, they might be making more staying on unemployment, and that's certainly a concern. 
that is um, slated to end in July. Um, don't know if it will um, be renewed on the federal level. There's been discussion of it um, going to $250, but nothing has been passed. But that's a concern and could show in some of those numbers. Uh, any other board comments, thoughts on the current financial um, situation? Yeah, I, I can, you know, I'll echo your uh, comments about it. Some, any small business owner I've talked to, you know, that has employees, it, it has been kind of kind of hard to try to get some people back. Cause, yeah, there, there's people that are actually making more on unemployment. Um, it's some people are doing okay. I'm doing all right, but it, it, it is weird. Um, there's a lot of extra things you kind of have to look out for. And, you know, even though financially you're secure, there's still, you're always kind of looking over your shoulder as to what's next and what's, uh, are you liable for anything? You, you, you know, any kind of financial strain of if you took some federal money or state money. Uh, so it's not all rosy, but it's, you know, it's a lot of general contracts I talked to, they're doing fine, but it's, it's still a weird time. Um, kind of my uh, two cents there. Yeah, every contractor I've talked to is busy right now building decks for people because people are home so much more in building decks for restaurants so that they can do outside seating. Um, and uh, I also talked to someone who uh, owns an RV dealership, which obviously we don't have here in Willington, um, but they were saying that their uh, lot traffic has changed a lot. They have no tire kickers. Um, no people just sort of coming and dreaming, but their serious customers have really stepped up. Their serious customers are coming in, uh, and they're actually, their sales are higher than, uh, normal in previous years for the same months, because, um, the people who are serious buyers are, um, shifting towards newer campers and wanting to be out in the country in the fresh air more. Um, so it is interesting how it's affecting things, but it's not, um, it's changing things, but not shutting things down either in, in a lot of areas. Any other board comments? Mike, I, if I'll circle back just for a minute, this is the first year of the teacher's contract. Um, it's set to expire July 1, 2022. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, um, new business. Item number one, CIP reopener. Um, you all got the uh, response from Chairman Cobb on CIP. Um, he says he wants to wait until August for the latest numbers from Donna. Um, so we will hopefully soon be hearing uh, some scheduling for um, CIP meetings. That obviously affects the, the upcoming fiscal year um, as well as the out years. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of discussion to be had there, so. Um, any other comment on CIP before I move on? All right. Um, item number two, transfers per request of Donna. Um, late this afternoon, I did send out an email uh, that I got the actual detail of the transfers from Donna. Um, I don't know how many of you even had an opportunity to look at that. Um, but I will, uh, there are only three, I believe. I'm going to open them up right now. Okay, uh, so it says suggested motions for consideration by the Board of Finance, end of year transfer requests. Two departments are tracking to have a budget shortfall when we close the books on June 30th. Um, Public Health and Safety in uh, Eastern Highlands Health District is looking to run $2 short. Um, the transfer station is looking to run $24,000 short, which is bulky and trash removal expense greater than budgeted. Approved budget for uh, bulky is 52,000, but is forecasting for 68,000. And approved budget for trash is 85,000, but is forecasting 97,000. Um, we did discuss this a little bit in previous meetings and Troy said that there is a significant increase in um, traffic and um, unloading because everyone's home and cleaning basements and 
doing home projects and things like that. Um, and so some we're, increase we're going in back to um, opening things up on July 1 at the transfer stations. So we're hoping some of that may slow down, but we get people who don't typically come and bring bulky waste, bringing bulky waste again, because everyone's home and it's, it's quite entertaining up there some days. Every, I should say everything but the, the swap shed. Right. Um, and the way that those two items are proposed to be covered is um, remaining funds in the employee insurance line item, which uh, we've tapped into earlier in this calendar year. Um, it was originally budgeted with an assumption for Connecticut Connecticut to increase 14.5% in the current fiscal year, but they only increased by 2%. Um, so this is tapping into that uh, extra budgeted money for a total of $24,002. Um, so uh, board discussion on this? All right. Um, I'll make a motion that we transfer $24,002 from line item 0831 employee insurance to line item 0233 public health and safety EHHD in the amount of $2 and to line 0351 transfer station in the amount of $24,000. Can I get a second? Matt, was that you seconding? Yes. Thank, thank you. Um, can those be made as one motion? Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Sure. Yes. Right. I think so. Okay, I didn't know if they had to be separate because they were going to separate places, but I'm sorry oh, for then, then EHHD is not getting their two bucks. <laughs> no, sorry, I just wanted to, to um, click. So Marissa, you'll find the details in, uh, in your email. I got it. Thank you. All right, any more discussion? Let's vote. Christina. Yes. Matt. Yes. Peter. Yes. Jeff. Yes. Mike. Yes. Okay. Item three of new business, emergency communications um, task force. So going back to what I was reading, the memo uh, is to the board of finance from Erica dated yesterday. Um, I'd be happy to. Uh, what was that, Erica? I'd be happy to talk to the subject if here. Okay, let me finish reading it since I started it before. Um, on Monday, June 15, 2020, the Emergency Communications Task Force was created to explore and recommend a potential system and protocols. The task force will be a 10-member committee made up of various stakeholders in our community, including a member of the Board of Finance. I would ask that with your board discuss the matter and recommend a member that would represent the Board of Finance on the committee. The Board of Selectmen will then appoint that member to the task force. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact my office. You're on, Erica. So um, in light of recent um, events in Wellington, there's been much discussion on um, how we can communicate with the public um, and help ensure our uh, residents feel safe. And one of those ways is emergency communications. And it's, it's, it's pretty encompassing. And so we've decided to stand up a task force to recommend um, whether or not there's a system that the town would then purchase um, potentially on an annual basis, as well as protocols for um, that system. So before we go out and purchase something and commit ourselves to funding, we wanna make sure we know what we want and how we wanna use it. So the committee is 10 members, four um, members at large from the community, a member of the Board of Ed, a member of the Board of Finance, myself, the EMD, one member from Willington EMS, and um, a non-voting member from um, law enforcement. So uh, troop, we've reached out to Troop C and they will um, send someone to participate in this. So we're asking that the Board of Finance um, recommend a member of your board and send that name to the Board of Selectmen to then appoint 
um, on this task force. And then any recommendations will come back to the Board of Selectmen. So depending on what that work um, entails, you may see us coming back asking for funding. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a comment and uh, Erica, I, because we had so many minutes to plow through, I didn't have time to check in on the Selectmen's meeting and all that. So I'm sure you've discussed a lot of this. So take this comment, not as a challenge, but just clarification for me. I feel like the most of this information should already exist. And I feel like we pay $6,000 a year for emergency management director who should have this information already, should already be operating a system. And, um, and I believe that our 911 center already has all the like reverse 911 type systems or ever bridge systems. So um, again, not, not an attack, but I wonder why it requires a task force and why we can't just say, does, why didn't we use the system we already have? So there's, we don't have our own system. There is a reverse 911 system run through um, TN that um, could be used. In, in this particular incident, we were talking about a law enforcement matter, so the messaging would have come from law enforcement. If we had sent something out, we needed to work in conjunction with them. So what we don't have is our own system. If we wanted to send something out, not using that reverse 911, but within the town. And so this is really looking at, do we want the, the admin side of an Everbridge system or something else Mansfield uses a code red system? to operate on our own within the town. So we do have a system in place that we can utilize, but we don't have a really any protocols in place. And so I think that's important and that's why, um, and, and I said to, at the selectmen's meeting, I'm not in favor of us just going out and purchasing the admin side of a system and going out and using it. I think we need to know what we wanna do with it and make sure we buy, if we purchase something that it's what fits our needs. And our needs may simply be as a town that we don't need anything additional, but we work on some protocols. Also, um, and I've spoken with our neighboring communities, that we'd like to look at a regional approach to that too, because the incident that happened in Willington, again, although it was a law enforcement matter, bordered different towns. And so together we all have concerns as far as how messaging would go. And that's why law enforcement is at the table as well. What may come out of this, Mike, may be that we don't as a town need to purchase anything additional. And, and that may very well be the conversation, um, but I think it's important to address it so that we know, uh, I think it's important to have some protocols in place. And I'd like to, to have lots of input. It's bigger than just the three selectmen. Okay, understood. I, I'm just surprised we don't already have, I mean, we have emergency management director yeah. and this stuff is standard. Every town modifies it a little bit for their own but this is standard stuff. I mean, all the towns are, the good news is all the information's out there. It's unfortunate we don't have it at our fingertips. You know, there are hundred page manuals in most of the towns around us. And I've operated systems like this before. And, and I just assumed we had it in, at the ready. And then, you know, the discussion has come up before. This isn't the first time we've talked about whether or not the town should have something. Um, I think, you know, in Christina's time, we went through and got quotes on whether or not we wanted the admin side of Everbridge, and that was discussed before. So really addressing the concerns of our residents and, and having the discussion um, and, and just talking it through. So what may come out of it may be no additional purchasing um, from the town, and um, that may be the recommendation, but we're going to start the conversation. Okay. And just for board members, for anyone who doesn't know, when Erica says we have access to uh, a reverse 911 or Everbridge type system through TN, TN is our 911 center in Tolland, which is the regional, um, it's sort of county and more um, 911 center. And um, so they handle our 911 calls and they also dispatch our fire police and all that other kind of stuff um, and uh, do some of this reverse 911 stuff in emergency situations. Just for clarity there. Um, board member discussion on this? Yeah, Mike. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't remember all 10 members. Do, do we have, is there representation from TN on this committee? Or is it just law enforcement? Well, we have, we, e, Stewart is on the committee as the emergency management director, and he also helps to operate that system at TN. Okay. 
And someone from uh, Doug Racicott from uh, TN came out and spoke at the Board of Selectmen meeting, and he would be more than happy to come and speak at any of our meetings to help with understanding of all of that system as well. That, that's where I was going. Thank you. Yeah, he runs the system in Tallinn, so he's very uh, familiar with the town side of it, not just the TN portion. More board discussion? All right, is someone interested in taking this um, on? Christina, you've got history. Peter Tanaka, you do some police dispatching. You guys both are I see as potential candidates. I'd like to nominate Mike McCo. That, is that what I get for opening my mouth? Okay. Yes, yes it is. Mike, I already put my name forward as an at-large person, but- Oh, okay. And I would also second uh, Peter's nomination of you. All right, I see where this is going. Um, all right, any other comments? All right, let's vote on my nomination. Peter? You were cut off at the beginning, Marissa. Oh, sorry, Peter? Yes. Matt? Yes. Christina? Yes. Jeff? Sure. I don't know. Do I ask you, Mike? <laughs> I'll I'll take a yes. I don't have a choice anyway. All right. Um, okay. Um, that is it for new business um, correspondence. The only thing that you guys did not get an email was this. Um, I believe I did not send you the memo that I just read you, um, but I will forward it. Um, I have email open on one of my three screens right now. And as soon as the meeting ends, I'll forward it to you. Um, that's it for new business uh, and correspondence. Um, we'll come back to present to speak one more time. Uh, while we're in the virtual world, I'm going to keep the two present to speaks uh, going here. Um, anyone uh, who's on video who wants to speak, wave your hand, please. Erica. I apologize, I neglected when you were discussing um, COVID related items. We do, um, I believe this is a change since you last met, we last talked about it, that uh, as you know, the state is ever changing. We originally were told any expenses COVID related would go through FEMA. And then we were told OPM would cover those expenses based on estimates that were sent in by the 169 towns. Um, at this point now, the state has set aside $75 million for those expenses in a uh, coronavirus care relief fund at the state. So now we first will apply for our 75% reimbursement to FEMA, and then we'll apply to the state fund for the other 25%, so that way um, we are able to capture hopefully 100% of all of our COVID related expenses to date. We had estimated in our last estimates that uh, Donna did for us between schools and town um, and EMS about 62,000 um, up to June 30. So we will be working on that. So the assumption is that we should be getting back 100% of the monies that we've extended on COVID related expenses and that would go back to the general fund as it will come back to us after July 1. So it is some positive news, um, not much, but whatever we return, we will look for some additional funds at that point. So I wanna thank Donna for her work um, on top of um, an extended budget season and preparing for new finance software set to take effect July 1 working on all of these COVID expenses. Okay, thank you. Um, in earlier present to speak and in our discussions, there's, um, there are a lot of thoughts about what do we do next? How do we go forward? How do we look at this year differently from other years? What's our process? Um, I'm thinking a lot about what we've learned over the last few months. So I would encourage board members to be thinking as we um, put the budget process itself behind us and go into the next meetings about what we do next, how we improve things. Um, there were a lot of things we asked for in the budget process that maybe we need to ask for in advance next time. Maybe we need to 
create a form letter or whatever it is. Um, so I would encourage people to take what we got from present to speak tonight and other and these other meetings um, and what we've discussed tonight and um, figure out how we're going to apply that in the future. Plan on talking about it at the next meeting, I'm sure. Um, anyone else on present to speak? If you're in video, wave your hand. Okay, Mike D'Amato, can you unmute everyone again, please? Sure. Okay, they should be able to. Okay, anybody out there who is not on video um, who would like to speak, please unmute your device and call out your name. Okay, and on to good and welfare. Um, Hang in everybody, it's improving. Those minutes prove we went through a very complicated budget process. Um, my hope is that soon we'll be able to meet in person again. Um, thank you all for sticking to it. Uh, anybody else have anything in good and welfare? Marissa, yeah, thank you for all the work on those minutes. Jeff, go ahead. Well, I guess, you know, to your point, I, at, at some point we'll meet, we'll meet again at some point, but any guidance, I, I mean, can we be outside? I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, technically, technically we could meet outdoors and Erica, what is the latest on indoor meetings? They're just revising the numbers right now, aren't they? Listen, that's a little complicated a subject, and I think uh, myself, as met any other uh, town leaders, are frustrated in the responses that we've gotten from the state. Um, one day they make it sound like they never really told us we couldn't meet, but what we can't do is restrict a public meeting. So if we can only have an inside gathering of 25 people, how do you tell people they can't come to your public meeting? And currently in Willington, we don't have the capabilities to broadcast a meeting um, you know, we could try to set something up like this. So, you know, the many towns have concerns over how we limit people who can come in into a meeting and we need a place where you, even with 25, you'd have to be all, all be six feet apart. So it's something that we're looking at and ongoing. It's certainly a concern if we want, uh, need to do anything else that would require a town meeting um, because we cannot restrict people from attending. We may only get 10 or 15 people on average, but the one time we anticipate that and 150, 200 people show up, it's a little bit different. So we may be able to do some things outside. Um, so stay tuned. Just not yet. Uh, although I am enjoying this access to people, I think tonight is really um, not reflective of the number of people who have paid attention to our meetings and been able to come to our meetings. So I would like to try to get us spending it is certainly a concern and funds are a concern. But if we had some um, capabilities to broadcast our meetings, I think more people would be paying attention and see what's happening in town. That's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, Matt, you raised your hand. No, it's okay. Um, okay. Um, Peter, we're past present to speak, but uh, if you have a comment that's relevant, um, unmute. Just a question um, in the interest of having actual public meetings as soon as possible, why wouldn't the hall school, hall school and gymnasium be more than adequate for a board of finance, a board of selectmen meeting? It's quite spacious and well lit and could hold 150 people socially distanced because right now they're saying you can only have 25 people so if 26 showed up we'd be in violation of the health orders that's that's where that's the difficult the difficulty right now correct and and uh, you know who wants to tell that 26 person they can't come to a public meeting um, especially if we don't have a, something in place in in order for them to then watch or participate in the meeting and that's important so it's important that they that we'll be able to have them but people need to be able to attend and I don't want anyone to be shut out of a meeting for any reason. So right now, as long as we're 25 people inside, um, isn't necessarily relevant for us. Thank you. Matt, you got a comment? How many people do we usually get to our meetings? You're a little muffled there. You may be a little far away, but I think you said how many people do we usually get? Yeah. Um, 
I would say that the attendance you see here tonight is a little bit typical of our summer meetings. Um, only a couple of people from the public attending because we're right after budget season. There's less um, controversy or less things that people want to uh, have a motivation to comment on. Yeah, yeah I think, um, you know, I'm with, with Peter Latinsic. I think we should be having public meetings as soon as we possibly can. As well, yes, there are people who will attend meetings electronically. There are people who cannot attend meetings electronically. They, they lack the capability to do that. And we're, so we're cutting out a whole, a whole portion of our population. We're not hearing from them. So I also I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please stand by. So I think, you know, if we could, if we could do that, that'd be very beneficial. And if, and if we have a problem with that, we can just simply say, okay, we have 26 people. This meeting will be continued. We're not going to have it. But shutting out people, I don't think is, is a good idea either. So I, I would argue that we're not shutting people out. The executive order says they have to be allowed to listen in real time. And that doesn't necessarily mean they have to have a computer or access to video. They have to be able to listen and everyone, anyone with access to a telephone um, can call into the meeting and listen to the meeting. That is, um, that is a requirement. Yeah, so, so safe to say we, um, we would like to get back to in-person meetings, um, not, not public meetings, because this is a public meeting, but we would like to get back to in-person meetings as soon as we can. Um, so everyone keep the faith. Your hands in there. I don't trust you washing them. All right. Um, can I get a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. In a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night at 8.06. Record. <laughs>